you think? I am all that he created. And that is that you will be in the shadow. Sometimes you have to hear a thing. everyone, I'm Alicia Hart and welcome to Live Your Journey. This week's journey, Nepal. Check it out, I'm right on a very busy street in Nepal. 30 million people live in the country of Nepal. Right now we're in Kathmandu, 1.18 million people live in this awesome, awesome city. You may remember back in 2015, they had that horrible earthquake that happened here. 9,000 people died, about 22,000 people were injured and they're still recouping from all that happened. All through the city you can see there are, are, are buildings that are still toppled, there's debris all over, even just right over my shoulder you can see that they're re rebuilding that building just over my shoulder and guess what God has called us here this week to preach the gospel we'll be praying for people we'll be preaching a uh, Jesus Christ to people that have never heard before we know that people will be healed they'll be saved they'll be set free and we're so excited for all that he has planned for us in this assignment we're excited guess what Deborah's with us all the way from home say hey Deborah. Hey, and guess what? We've got to grab the camera from Kaylin so you can see Kaylin all the way from home. Say hi, Kaylin. Yes, yes. We're all super excited. We can't wait. Will you journey with us this week all the way in Nepal? Come on, let's do this. Nepal, home to the tallest peaks on earth. Yes, eight to be exact, including, you guessed it, Mount Everest also home to millions of people still recovering from that massive earthquake that rocked this country two years ago. Kathmandu is the densely populated capital city where myself and two ladies from home began our mission. The streets are bustling, I mean it. Animals, cars, motorcycles, and people are constantly vying for space. Hey, it's just the way of life here, and we are thoroughly enjoying it taking it all in. We even traveled to Monkey Mountain where we captured the most beautiful picture of this capital city. Hands, look right up there. They're eating watermelon rind. Buddhism is the main religion here and it wasn't hard to see as we encountered plenty of temples and shrines during our daily travels to and from church services. We are traveling through the countryside in Nepal and it's absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. It actually kind of reminds me of the Tuscan hillside. There's rolling hills, huge green luscious mountains. It's really breathtaking. And speaking of travels, on this same ride, we caught a glimpse of people carrying wheat when we were en route to speak at a church. On this journey, we were invited to minister to a big group of small churches. Our host pastor and the overseer of this group of churches is Pastor Palmer. He's a wonderful man. We absolutely fell in love with him during our trip. He wore many hats during our trip. He was our interpreter, our tour guide, as well as our host. Many of the believers are still learning about the things of Christ as these churches have only been around for about 11 years. This, I believe, only intensified their extreme passion for our Lord and Savior. I simply love this. They were like sponges, and we were literally pouring in everything we could behind the pulpit, in conversation, and in the homes that we were invited into. Oh, she said, mm. Like this home. Let me tell you a little bit about this. This home was rebuilt right after the earthquake. And with pride, we were given the grand tour and how lovely it was. Okay, thank you. The intimate setting with our fellow believers made room for fellowship in between and after services. I'm a people person, so I simply love this. So we're having a traditional Nepalese dish. We've got rice and we've got beans and then we have um, a kind of like a bean curd and then we've got chicken. Delicious. Helping our fellow Christian leaders of these churches spread the gospel is our goal. So being able to spiritually and financially sow into these ministries 
was a blessing not only to them, but to us, as we know, we will see much fruit from our seed. And boy, oh boy, we heard so many testimonies from some of the amazing things the Lord has done. Listen to this. I uh, usually used to uh, get sick very often, very often, and I uh, I was uh, taken to um, which which doctors, and they said that you will you will not uh, live, to, you will die soon. Uh, then after that I received Jesus and I am now blessed. I have uh, salvation now. Doctor Lim Malai Bhane, tapai ko bada bacha hoon. Dene tapai ko Sri Mati ko thik cha. Ani and doctor said that uh, from you it's impossible, but uh, with the your wife says okay to bear a child. Taraya hospital mein bacha sa chora bansan chori bansan agri bansan gatre lana sabna ancha. But uh, one thing you can do is in the hospital we have uh, several child. Better you pick one of them and take as your son or daughter. Ani hami ghara gayo. And we went home. Doctor la theri pachi aunsu manera. And we said doctor uh, maybe we'll come later. And uh, we together we uh, fasted and uh, prayed. Mahamili Banu Prabhu Nobi Varsako Sarara Sai Varsako Abraham Lai Shantandine Prabhu Jivi Tununja. And we uh, said to the uh, God that you are the one who gave Abraham who was uh, hundred nine years. And uh, Sarah was 80 years old. 90 years. Ni 90. Mani hamre prathna parmeshu de shunnu bo ra char dana bacha dini bo. And he heard, uh, he, yes, he answered uh, our prayer with four children. Our time in Nepal, simply life changing. We left a part of our hearts there, in fact. Well, that's until next time when we go spread a little more love, light, and God's unfailing gospel to our new Nepalese kingdom family. What a journey. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, everyone. Well, everywhere I go, my heart's cry is to make his name famous. Yes, that's the name of Jesus Christ. And your partnership with us means that you get to help make that possible. Together, we're feeding the hungry. We're giving practical items to those in need and spreading the love of Christ. Thank you so much for helping us do that all around the world. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Please log on to AliciaHeart.com and stay current with all that we're doing. Also, we'd love to join you at your next event, your next conference or service, or simply just pray for you. How do you make that happen? Well, all you have to do is log on to our website and we'll give you all the details. We'll make it really easy for you. Again, that's AliciaHeart.com. Well, we look forward to hearing from you real, real soon. God bless you, and I decree increase, abundance, and supernatural overflow. Somebody shout, I'm ready to hear the word. Ready to hear the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. Can you turn your Bibles there? For those of you that are new to cracking open the word, that is the very first book, the very first verse. So it should be relatively easy to find. Genesis 1, 1 and 2, when you're there, say amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. If you have a pen, I want you to underline form without form and void. 
the earth was without form and void. If something is void or something has been voided, it has no value. Come on, somebody. It has no value. It has no worth. If I write a check and I write it out to you and then I write void across that check, that check no longer has any value. And you're probably going to ask me to write you another check. Come on. If I owe you something and I void out the check that I write to you, you're going to ask for another check or some cash or something. Come on. And so if something is voided or void, uh, when we use the restroom, come on, we're voiding. That has no value. Come on. There is no value. There is no use for that, and that's why we void. Amen. Amen. If I were to sign a contact or write a contract or come into a covenant with you with respect to a contract, and then I void that out, that contract no longer has what? Value. It, it, it is not binding anymore, right? That means you don't have to hold up your end of the deal, and I don't have to hold up my end of the deal because it's useless. Amen? So if something is voided or void, it has no value, it has no use, it has no worth. If something is without form, it has no order. It has no shape. Typically, it is visually unappealing to us. And the earth was without form. There was no order. There was no shape. Come on. And it was void. It had no value. Come on. It had no value. It was worth nothing. Now, when God allowed the Bible to be written, he could have allowed the beginning and those scriptures to say something like this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And there was day and he called, he gave light and it was day and he said it was good. And there was night and he separated the waters from the earth. But he didn't want it to go down like that. He said, you know, I, I, I want to show them how big and bad I am. I want to flex a little bit, and I'm going to show them that I'm the creator. So here's the thing. If you've got some clay, the very first thing that happens in a potter's house or in a place where they're making something out of clay is that they will take that clay and literally... They will throw the clay. Have you ever felt thrown? Come on. Have you ever felt like you were be f being thrown to and fro? Have you ever felt like in your life you were being thrown from one place to the next? Come on. Come on, that's the very first thing that the Lord showed me. And it can feel very scary and unstable at times. Come on. Have you ever felt like you were thrown? The next thing that the potter does is he turns the wheel on. Now, the wheel is useful in creating this masterpiece that he's going to create because there's something that happens with the turning of the wheel. But I will say this to you. Have you ever felt like you were spinning and going nowhere? Yeah. Ah. Have you ever felt like your life, all you were doing is going around and around and around? I get up, I brush my teeth, I comb my hair, I wash my face, I go to work, I... Da, 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 and everything is the same. It's monotony, the same. I'm married year after year after year. My kids are getting older and nothing is moving forward. It's the same thing. I'm spinning around and around. I can get up and do this with my eyes closed. I'm speaking to somebody in here. It's the same thing day after day. Week after week, month after month, I'm in a vicious cycle and I feel like I'm not progressing. I'm not moving forward. What's next for me? And God, why am I not able to step outside of this thing that has me going like this? I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I'd like to step out and do something else. And he will throw water on the clay. 
Now he does this so that the clay will not stick to his hands. He does this to make the clay flexible and agile. Water is symbolic of the word of God. Come on, somebody. We're going somewhere. Water is symbolic of the word of God. And God will allow water to be sprinkled in our lives so that we become flexible and agile. Because when you know that the word says that by your stripes you are healed, that when you get that bad report or that negative report, you're flexible. And you understand what the word says concerning you and your life. Come on, y'all. And so that water is sprinkled upon the clay. Our heavenly potter sprinkles uh, his word or heavenly water on us so that we become flexible. So that we become agile concerning the things of God. So again, when situations pop up in your life... You're like, the word says I'm more than a conqueror. Back up off. Come on. The word says by his stripes I'm healed. Whatever. Come on. Come on. And there's something that it does when you begin to get that inside of your spirit. When you begin to get that inside of you. And here's the thing. This stage is the preparation stage. The next thing. A potter does is the potter begins to stretch, press, and pull on the clay. Ooh, ouch! Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a video because see, y'all. Um, <clears throat> the first time I did pottery was uh, Thursday uh, for this message, and um, so we're going to have a shared visual. And some of that will be from a professional, and some of that will be from me. Do I have grace? Are we good with that? Okay, because I would blow it all up, and you wouldn't even get the point. Okay? Okay, so, so here's what happens when the potter in the natural begins to pull on the clay. Oh, yes. He begins to stretch. Okay, can you, can you rewind that and show that one more time? When the potter begins to stretch and pull the clay, this is what happens. Thank you. That clay begins to what? Go beyond its original borders. Mm-hmm. When he started to pull on that clay, it looked like this, and it was about this big. But something happened when he began to pull on the clay. See, the clay went beyond its original capacity. Oh, come on, y'all. It went beyond its original state. It went to a place it had never been. Y'all, I'm preaching up in here. It went to a place and it, it, it rose to a thing that it had, not, it had not been before, right? It went beyond its capacity. It went beyond where it had ever seen. And here's the thing. When the heavenly potter begins to stretch us, you're going to enlarge. Your capacity is going to go to a place that it has never been before. See, the potter will <clears throat> cut away what's no longer needed. You can cut it off now. He'll cut away what is no longer needed, what's excess. Right? What's no longer needed because, again, he sees the end of that thing. He knows what the finished product, come on, you guys. He knows what he's creating. The clay doesn't know what he's creating, but he knows what he's creating. He doesn't need the clay's help. And because he knows what he's creating, he knows that that uh, extra clay at the bottom is just that extra. I don't need that to create my masterpiece. And the same is true for our Heavenly Father. He will sometimes come and cut a thing. And I don't know about you, but being cut doesn't feel good. Now, I mean, I haven't just been in a fight where I just got cut, cut. But paper cuts hurt. Right? I mean, you can get a paper cut. You're like, oh! Stitches. Paper cuts are no 
joke, aren't they? Especially if you get it like between your fingers or in a place that always moves. Ooh. When you're cut, it doesn't feel good. Nobody volunteers to be cut. I would, I would like to be the one getting cut. No, no one signs up to get cut on. Hear the voice of God. And sometimes in your life, God will come along and say, you don't need that. The people you've been hanging out with, we're going to cut them off. Oh, 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 I have another job for you, so I'm going to go ahead and let them lay you off because I have this for you over here. Remember, he sees the end from the beginning. I, I wish y'all would hear me in here. And so sometimes the king will come and cut stuff off of you, and you have no idea why this is happening. You hate the fact that it's happening. It hurts, but he sees the end. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. I have a hope and a future for you. It's good and never evil. Jeremiah 29, 11. Come on. Come on. So sometimes he will slice and dice. And you just have to get with the program knowing he's the potter and you're not. He's the one making this thing and not you. You always have value, but God is wanting to make you even more valuable. So God's saying, do you mind the process? Do you mind the process? You may feel broke down and squashed, but some of you need to say, excuse the mess. Excuse the mess. Excuse all of this. I'm just under construction. I'm just under construction. I know I'm a little rough around the edges right now. I, I, I know that I got stuff falling over here and, and falling over there, and, and, and God is cutting some stuff off, and you see that trickling right behind me. But, but, but if you'll give me a little bit of grace, I'm under construction. I'm under construction see 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 I know that his mercies are brand new every morning and I know that a just man falls seven times seven and I know that I'm gonna slip and fall and I know that I have to get back up and when I get back up you'll have to excuse me it's part of the process I'm under construction so don't judge me don't judge me don't judge this don't judge this you hadn't seen the boss you can pick me up at Mon Mall. Don't go to Walmart because they don't they have a replica. Come on. Close your eyes. Spirit of the living God. You're so mighty to us. Father, we've heard you today. We've heard you. Some of us are being stretched. Some of us are uh in a place of pressure. Some of us have been on the wheel going around and around and around and around. Some of us can't seemingly get ahead and, and some of us are on the wheel year after year after year. But Father, thank you. Thank you for revealing that it's part of the process. I'm under construction. Construction's not bad. That means I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna be new and improved when you're done. So God, help me, grace me. Grace me through this situation. Grace me through the process. Help me embrace it, Lord. And Father, help me to get it the first time. I don't want to be scrunched and, and have to do it one and two and three times. Reveal it to me, God, so that, 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 that the, the, the marred marks and everything that's not like you gets out the first time so we can just move forward and give me an ear to hear and give me obedience it's better than sacrifice give me that pliable spirit that flexible spirit that teachable spirit so that I can walk in your ways Holy Ghost help me to embrace my season of construction and the name that's above every other name the mighty name of Jesus come on if you appreciate God's word today jump to your feet and give him a round of applause Thank him. Let him know I heard you, God. Tell him I hear you, Jesus. I heard you, God. 
I heard you. Well, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed today's show. I tell you what, God has been huge in Kathmandu. And right now we're getting ready to wrap up one of our final uh, sessions and services. We're getting ready to preach the word of God and we know God is gonna transform lives. But I wanna show you something. We're right in the middle of a village. And, and take a look at this. We've got guys riding on motorcycles. How you doing? We've got little munchkins right over here. And, and take a look, they actually wash their clothes and they hang them, they wash them right here. This is your typical uh, well, if you will. So there's water in here, they drink this water, they wash their dishes, you can see that with this water, and then they hang their clothes. Look at this cute little one right here, you have to, you have to see her, oh, sweet little girl. Hi, baby, high five. Oh, high five, she said no. <laughs> Nevertheless, we hope that you've been blessed by all the things that the Lord has done. He's transformed lives, we've seen people delivered and set free from different bondages and you know what we know that God and all of heaven everything all the angels are rejoicing right now over all that has been done people's eternity has been met and that's so incredibly glorious and we are so blessed because of everything that's happened and if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior the Bible says all you have to do is ask for him to come live in your heart would you like to do that right now we can absolutely do it if you'd like Father, right now in the name of Jesus, all those that are watching that say, you know what, I've seen all that God has done in Nepal and in all the lives of the people, and I desire that to happen for me. I believe that Jesus walked the face of the earth, that he died on the cross and he rose again on the third day so that I could live in eternity with him. Father, come live in my heart. Live big in me so that I can live big for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm saved and born again. My sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus. Well, that's it. The Bible says that all of heaven is absolutely rejoicing, and we're rejoicing with you right now. So long from Kathmandu, Nepal, and guess what? You have to see one more little cutie right here. High five, babe. Oh, he's running from me. He's running. Hi. Hi. High five. <laughs> they are the sweetest. Oh, so, so, so sweet. Thank you again for joining us. And everybody, remember, live your journey.